Hi, it's Chris, and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. On the show today, we have a box from Mr. Oram. I don't have his return address because he forgot to give it to me. I've already unpacked it. It was packaged very well in 6,287 feet of bubble wrap. So, we'll get rid of that. And here we go. This is an Amiga 600. It is a, oh my god, my glasses, 1.5, and it's missing its radiator cap. The modulator has been whatevered. This is going to be a PAL unit because the NTSC modulators are half of this. I think this has been recapped. It has yellow marks all over the capacitors, but I see some yuck in there. Could be grime. I do see some discoloration on several of the pads, or it could be crust. We'll know more when we check her out. Audio circuit, leaky, and the op amp and the 555 timer, that's the op amp here, and the 55 timer is that little chip, triple five. That is uh, discolored. Uh, RAM has a mark on it, probably a scuff. Everything else looks okay. For the 600, I like to remove the audio connectors to have better access to Lorena those off. Can't get in there with two soldering irons or hot tweezers without melting the uh, keyboard ribbon, so we're not going to do that. I do it my way. This is Kickstart 3.2.1 on a 1.5 big sticker. And that's all I can tell you on this. Oh, Christmas. Burnt slap up components and big red, uh, big brown turds of burn. There's flux all over the place on the through holes, so they've been recapped with suntans. <laughs> China. I bet you these are all Chinese caps too. So we're going to replace them all with Nichicons and Panasonics and get this girl set for the future. I'm going to remove the modulator because if you're in America here, where Jesus lives, we don't have PAL televisions, and I doubt he does too. So I'm going to take this out. This allows future expansion. For the old RGB to HDMI with the ribbon cable goes right out here. It looks real nice. Really nice. Huh? Unlike mine, I just shoved it out the hole. But, you know, if you had the adapter and it looked really pretty, you could do such a thing. So as a convenience and a better power flow because you don't need the 100 UF caps here if you do that. But I put them back on just in case you ever want to put a modulator. And I return the modulator with the unit. Unless I forget. Apparently I forget a lot because I found like 15 modulators. Cankle bracelets on, just in case you're wondering. Sometimes it flies off of the table grip and smacks me in the face. Let's see what happens. I have no lights, so... 47102, kickstart 3.2.1. Working. My monitor shows raster lines on PAL. Just on the, it is a 60 hertz monitor. It is capable of doing PAL like you're seeing here, but there is some lines. Now, it actually is supposed to look like this in 4x3. I just have it on fill because there you go. That's a little bit clearer, but the lines are tighter. You really can't see them on camera. And there you go. It is a functioning machine as far as it turns on. These are crooked as a politician. I don't know if it's some assembly thing or years of plugging uh, RCA jacks in where you get some just a little bit of tweaking. So that and some good fresh 1968 Radio Shack lead tin solder will make sure these grip really nice. There we go. Boom. One crusty modulator. Let's take a peek at what she looks like underneath. Eh, crusty, but functional. Hooper Sooch, available at an Amazon store near you. 99.9 .9 medical grade. Isopropy alcoholine. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, it helps me turn on, not spray yourself. Oh, some I don't know how to wipe their butt. That is okay. While she's hot, at least I know where the cap, the through holes are because there's so much flux on them. I don't know what kind of acid they used on that mess. That's just to get the ground plane out. One more through hole. Four. 
Here we go. Today's interrupter of the day is Mr. Lord of Levels. We just had a nice chat about a 3000 UX coming to here to get fixed. And that's going to be pretty cool. And a whole bunch of other Amiga 3000 stuff. So look for that in the future. Another interrupter of the day. Mr. Jack from Texas, who is headed out to the south to pick up free Amiga stuff. Let me get this last RCA out here. An interesting find on both is solder sucking them out. The ends are really short here. They were just solder balled up in here. They weren't like the, the leg things. They weren't in there. They were just solder balled up. So they were making contact. You could see the solder on the head, but there's no one of the leg, the leg things isn't on the front. It's just, see the solder ball? Interesting. They're pretty clean inside. I'll go ahead and clean them out anyway. The copper strips in here get crusty. So I'm going to hit them with a micro uh, file and we'll wake those up. I'm going to Lorena the caps off. One cut. Oh, they're dry as dirt. Dry as dirt. Dry as dirt. Cut. Relief cut. Remove the ring. Get your poker. Pick off the rubber. Oh, no rubber on that one. Cut off your nipples. Well, the nipples of the cap. And your plastic dudes. Can you see that? Okay. We'll come right up. Oh, this one's stuck. Oh, there we go. Huh. This shot me in the face. A little bit of flux. This is Kester 186, my favorite flavor. We'll get the legs off. Somebody had a hair in there. I just burnt and inhaled. That's that's sexy. Here's a cleaned up, not wiped, right here, but where the hell are you? Right here above the audio filtering caps. There is a little bit of yuck to be expected at the age of these things. So I always try to like pour my enthusiastic love into them. For some of us, these things are a passion. Not just the fixing of someone else's machine for whatever reason I don't know I can't explain it unless you are an enthusiast you would get it you would understand and if you are you get it you'll get why I do this I'm telling you these are recapped but they're old recaps so I cut these two caps here and this top one here is going to come off but look at this do you see this wire? This wire is going to this leg because I guarantee you there's no pad there. Look at that. They bodge wired a negative pad into just laying on top of this hole. We'll take that and throw that out. Let's clean the area before I alcohol it off just to see what's going on. There's a little ball of solder in the Alright, let's carefully flux this and get those legs out. That's from excessive heat and uh, or just bad. You might have pulled an Adrian and twisted your cap off. Alright, let's see what we got here. This negative goes to this positive. It's like a series cap. All right, I'll fix that. So that cap is just done in series. There's the crusty cap. Let's see if I can clean her. Oh, blackness. Light. Light bursts of heat. Nothing crazy. And then a little alcohol. The liquor. Cheers, genitals. Alcohol helps clean it up a lot. Care? Oh, that's really bad. Give her a wipe and a fresh shower. 
and she'll look good again too. So that's those little dudes, and that's Tiny Land. Okay, so far, we're working backwards. We got the busted line negative that I found here. We're going to fix that to the, these are a series base cap, so positive negative, or negative goes to the positive of the 1. 303 to 304, negative 303 goes to the positive of 304, and these are your joined outputs. And up here was really crusty. My fiberglass pendant, you can see it's nice and shiny again. As far as the bottom of that big burn, flux the living crap out of this area and try to pull the solder out of this ground plane. And don't you want me, baby? Oh, yeah. You are no match for this. Boom! Pull them right out. Keep going, getting the through holes out. God, what solder did they use on this through hole? It won't, there we go, God. I had to beat the living crap out of that thing. The solder that was used on the previous recap is some tough stuff. It's, this web tool station makes light work of that ground plane. Bam! I gotta switch tips. All right, got the tiny tip in. See the level of goop everywhere? It's supposed to be like a nice shiny circuit board like this. All this up here, but when I angle it, see all that schlep and blech. So yeah. So what? You see nice and clear now, no schmutz everywhere, no blackness and death. Shininess, good pads. We do have one ground to fix over here, which is bonded to a positive, which we'll fix with some wire. I'm not gonna bore you with a recap. I'm gonna do all this side first, and then we'll go over here, and then I'll show you how I fix the ground that bonds to the positive on 304 from C303. I'm going to epoxy this down, but I'm going to zoom in to show you. Yeah. So, this cap is on, this cap is on straight. This is on a little wobbly because it's sitting up. There's the tiniest of wires. It's right here. It runs to a little pad right there. So it goes bank underneath the cap makes a leg. Put in a little bit of an angle. So it goes in and holds better. Put some UV dye on the edge of this cap. See the dot? It's in front of the cap. Maybe. I don't know. It takes a while to cure this, so I'll be back. Alright, so the Northridge Fix tool kit thing works. UV curable. Three quarters of a bottle of this left. I've repaired several of these. If you don't know who Northridge Fix is, it's another YouTuber that is like has eyeballs of a hawk, can see micro stuff like Apple motherboards and complex video cards and really he can fix anything you can throw at it. It's got really advanced money tools. Yeah, so we'll continue on here. Two hours later. Oh, hi, it's 7.15 uh, p.m. 19 new red dots. Epoxy fix on a broken leg that had an L piece of metal in it. So that's done. I'm gonna hose her down and let it dry in front of the fan for a little bit. Ah, uh, hee ha, hee ha ha. Um, there was some pink paint right here, and I guess I should have waited until I alcoholed the board off before I did my red dots. But they're done. You can uh, look at them if you want. We're clean. We're gonna let this dry for an hour or two in front of a fan. Yeah, yeah. Whoops, <laughs> cleaning up.
I went on the other side and I dug out my Amiga Kits A600 1 Mig expansion. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Are you stupid or something? Ta da! Turn my sound on. on. It is going to hum because it is. Uh, it is a charging device. Alright, let's go to memory. 2 megs of chip. Can you see that? I don't know. Two megs of chip. It is in PAL. I can go back out and lower it to NTSC. See how it's lower? Cool. So it is native PAL. Uh, audio. All four channels. Perfect. I also do this. test the uniformity of left and right audio channels. Sweet. CIAs. 50 hertz. All okay. RGB. Perfect. Static. And checkerboard alternating we don't really see because the monitor corrects the flicker. Now the Amiga 600 has a composite video slot, which we can also test on this device by switching input source to composite. It'll look a little fuzzier, but there you go. It looks a lot fuzzier on my NTSC tel uh, monitor, but the composite video signal is functional. RGB looks beautiful, and everything is functional again. There's only one more thing to test. One more thing to test if I can find it. I to test controller ports, you know. Alright, well, that's it. O-ROM's machine is back in action, tested, all functional, and everything is great. So by the time you see this video, he should have this back and be enjoying it immensely. That is another Amiga saved. I forget which even number I think we're at now, 263, or something like that. I need to put a running total on the wall somewhere so we can keep tabs, but my videos aren't always in order. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Stay tuned for more updates in the future and other repairs coming soon to a video near you. Thanks to all my Patreons and supporters who help keep making this possible each month. And thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.